Cyclonus the warrior and his armada. So, two for today. It is Kingdom Cyclonus. Basically Studio Series. Like you cannot tell me. Look at how flat this guy is and how little detail he has. You can't tell me this guy wasn't designed for Studio Series. He definitely fits. Like, it's just amazing. And then there's this Cyclonus. The Generations uh, Classics Universe. Just the Cyclonus used for everything for years. <laughs> I do have the more G1 color version of this mold, but it's currently broken, so we gotta get that fixed. Comparing the two, again, you can tell the difference between um, old generations and modern generations. It's uh, Back in the day, they wanted to evoke G1, but they weren't gonna be strictly beholden to it in like, every single minute detail, but here they're like going for like extreme screen accuracy. And again, depending on what you like, there are pros and cons to each. But the modern one has hands down all the time against the old one is articulation. In terms of what you can do in vehicle mode, well, they both have guns. You see, uh, the old one's gun is already on it, and the modern gun, you can just pick on the top. Or, if you really want to have the gun with the figure, but you don't want it to look that bad, you can peg it on the back. And that's, you know, it's out of the way for most angles. You can still see a bit of it, but again, you know, there's no, there's no real place to store the weapon. So it makes sense. I, I'm okay with that. If you don't like it, you don't have to have it. You know, like I said before, I really don't like a lot of greebly detail. Like, up there, the panel lining, it, it's going to look great when it's panel lined. When you actually have it in black and it pops. But in terms of just the plain, you know, uh, sculpted without any color, I don't like that. I like it, you know, flat and smooth like the nose is. It is cheaper to make, and it, and it looks more like a cartoon character in real life. So, that's it's great for me. There is slight discoloration on the forearms compared to the rest of the body. I don't know why that is, but it, it's, it's there. You can definitely tell, like, that is horrendous yellowing right there. Like, that is just... That is... I, I, you've seen, like, the Jetfire, he had yellowing. And a lot of figures white have slight yellowing. It's not enough to bug me though. I don't really even notice it. Magnus has some yellowing, but this is just that is atrocious, honestly. It doesn't come across the best on camera, but it is like a it looks like the color of a booger. <laughs> it looks like the color of a booger. That sickly yellow. The cockpit looks great, and unfortunately there is no tiny sculpted Galvatron. That would have been a nice little nod. Like how in uh you know, they had a sculpted Peter Cullen, the leader class, Optimus Prime from uh, forever ago. There is not one, there's not two, but four Blast Effect ports in the back. So you can just, you can get this guy in a really cool flying pose. Speaking of posing, posing. <laughs> he has a flight stand. But it's right in there to get... The ball joint on a stand in there, it won't fit. You have to, like, you split the legs. And you can try to, the legs won't compress back together when you do that. So, you get one of the little stand uh, hook things. Have it in this, the way I found it best is this odd uh, arrangement. And that will actually set into the gap between the legs and hold it securely. Again, the only sad part is that because of the plastic, you just can't have these plugged in too long because it'll melt the toy. Which they made these, they made some effects parts out of regular plastic for 
Kingdom Commander Rodimus. I don't know why they didn't do that to all of them. It would have solved that problem. Anyway, you can flip out some landing gear and send them down. Send the other one. There is no, obviously, because this is an older figure, they didn't really have that. There's no ports in the back for blast effects. But he has landing gear too. Uh, the nose cone tip. For some reason, the older version, it's made of this. Well, I know why. It's for safety. It's made out of this uh, bendy plastic. They, because of that, it, it seems to kind of, it warps and it slides. It's not as stable. It slides in pretty easy. Just to kind of nudge it. For Kingdom, it's just solid plastic. They they learn from their mistakes, which is good. Now there's a little nub on the end of the generation one. I wonder. Yeah. You can give him a blast effect. <laughs> That's cool. And of course you can put the blast effect onto the Kingdom one. But in this case, I think the Generation 1 wins because it this these two, it's the same kind of rubbery material. They probably won't melt each other. Now you see what's happening with the Generations 1. It's falling apart as I touch it. This one doesn't. There are no really tabs to speak of in this guy. This, theoretically tabs, you can hear that. But it's really easy to just, you know, knock it open. This guy, I'm shaking him, nothing's happening. This guy, I shake this guy, I, uh, I feel bad. He just crumbles. Um, a big part of it is the legs. The legs compress up here, but there's no, they just sit there. And they can wiggle. And there's no, there's no tabbing in point. They don't tab in at all. They don't tab together to each other right there. They just sit there so they can wiggle. They don't tab in at all. The arms, they don't tab in here at all. The only place they tab in is a tiny tab into there. And that tab is weak. So it's easy to just knock it right out. And it's just, there's, it's so much you can see that it's feet, and that it's, uh, you know, that it's legs. From the top, you can tell that those are going to be legs. There's that big gap, and you know, the feet just unceremoniously folded back. On this guy, obviously you can tell from the bottom, but that's the bottom. You can always tell from the bottom when Transformers. But from the top, you really, it, it hides the fact that it's a Transformer. It looks just like a spaceship model. It also doubles as a weapon. Because it's just, it's so sturdy and solid. Like, this is some sort of axe. Dang, you can just... I See, it doesn't even fall apart when I do that. I hit against the table. It's really well built. And on this, uh... There's a lot of smoothness on the nose cone of this Cyclonus, too. But there's so much, there's so much just molding and detail on the back. Which just makes it look too busy and messy for my taste. The legs look nice, though. They're nice and smooth. Transformations. Let's get this uh, guy out of the way first. Because it's actually pretty easy and smooth and slick. You fold this up. And you push that all the rest of the way down. Fold the hands out. And the only tough tab on this figure is this one. Like, that tab is... It's solid. It takes, you know, a bit of doing to get that tab undone. So you untab that, you extend the arm, rotate it around, and then collapses back on the double hinge. And well, of course, it doesn't tab in. It doesn't even really thoop in. It doesn't thoop in. It's just, it's free floating. You flip open... Let me show you the uh, the top half of the transformation. The, the coolest part is that like the head is integrated really well into the cockpit. So you just pull the cockpit back, 
fold that up, put that back in the body, and just rotate that, and there's the head. And it looks, it, it mimics the original toy, and it's, I, I think that works really well. I wouldn't have minded if they'd have done something like that with uh, Kingdom. The Kingdom's engineering is really cool as well. So, anyway, we're going to these up. Rotate these up. And what I think is really funny is you can, because the way the legs transform, if you angle them correctly, you can get some hideous freak of nature spider cyclonus thing out of your nightmare. It's kind of like, you know, Darth Maul. When he was, <laughs> that's, you know, it doesn't stay at all in posing. So let's just finish it. But that clips the way this these parts come together to make the full egg and how that blends seamlessly together you can't even tell there's a seam there like you can't tell it comes apart that's really cool of course this side holds up pretty well pretty tough this side though again it and the tab is basically a suggestion yeah, it's a pretty good looking Cyclonus in robot mode when you hold it together. The light piping is just amazing. You see the, the eyes already glowing. I turned the light off. I put it into shadow here. You can see the eyes still glowing. Can you can turn this light off. And then I add a bit of light from the top. And see that just, the eyes just look at that. The, look at that. The eyes, uh, the head uh, takes the light in so well. As for the sculpting, it's again, it's a lot of, uh, again, I don't mind the grizzly details when they're picked out in paint. When you panel line this guy, he will look. I'm sure he will look amazing with a uh, black panel liner filling all those little gaps and details. But just the greebly, the molded in detail, it doesn't do anything because it, it's just, it, it blends into the plastic, especially when it's, uh, you know, it's, it's all one color. Like here, that's molded in detail, but it's painted, you know, from the shoulder, so it looks like a separate piece, and that is cool. But like, you know, the mold and the that you can't even barely tell if that that line, those two lines, all that stuff, it, it just gets lost at any distance. So there's no real point of it. And it just drives up the price of making the figure. For some reason, he only has one port in his hand. The other hand is molded shut. But you can give him his gun. He holds it well, you can aim it well. And the gun, he if you also want to turn this around. You hold it like that, like a big club, just to clobber somebody with, which is cool. But the gun, as I'm sure you know, get out of the way. He will not stand. Just simply transforms, unfolds, unfolds. Now flip down. And do a target master. Tub, which is a uh, nightstick. Which probably, not even, but probably explains why he turns into a club. Because, you know, nightstick, night, that is just a, you know, it's a beating device. It's a baton. And nightstick looks really cool. He's, you know, his eyes and face are painted, which is more than you can say for Titan Masters. <laughs> so before I talk about articulation, let's go on to Kingdom Cyclonus. Now, Kingdoms, his transformation is just, it's slick. You'll start by flipping these up. I think you start. There's no real order. And all the tabs on this guy hold in really securely, aside from here. Hold that in. That will thoop into place. You hear it. Click. The arms are actually tied in really securely. Gotta kind of grab. You don't want to pull here because there's, there's a hinge there. See a gap coming apart. So you want to pull, like grab from there and pull out. And then it'll do that. So grab the thruster and pull. 
and then fold this up, each of these on this double hinge. Leave that and the, the legs, accordion them out. And the legs can either go all the way up right here, all the way down like they were, or in the middle. And I like the middle. But, you know, when you're posing it, you got to orient the, the knee joint exactly where you want it when you're done posing. Because it'll get out of whack. Open those up. About the feet. They're actually hidden away. Split the legs. They actually tab in. Engage the ankle tilt so he'll actually stand. Then you will rotate this first. That has to be done first before you open that. Because otherwise, you know, that there's no room. It won't, it won't open because it, you know, two things cannot occupy the same space. So you open that up. Then you bend this down to open that up. And then you split these two. And you open that up. And all of the nose cone will just fold down and collapse an accordion in on itself. Then you flip that down, and all of that hides away in the chest. And then you can close that together. The only thing you do is just rotate the arms, open that hinge, the hinge turns in place. The hand has to fold out this way, it cannot go this way. So rotate the hand out. Rotate the handout, both of which have ports for holding weapons. And there is a very G1 Cyclonus. So to compare them both, obviously uh, the Kingdom 1 wins and being cartoon accurate, it, it fills in gaps. Like, I don't think there are actually are any gaps on this guy. Well, back there. But that has to go for you know, transformation and for articulation. So, yeah. Articulation-wise, top and bottom. This guy has forward ankle uh, movement. Angle tilt. About that much. This guy has no ankle uh, movement. And the toes, the front and the back, you know, the foot and the heel, they can articulate in every transformation, but because, like, this can move down, that can't move up, and that can move, this can move down, that can't move up, it's useless for, you know, posing. Nine degrees have been at the knee for this guy, it's a bit of hyperextension. And this guy, as I said before, his knee can go, can hyperextend, and... It can go a bit more than 90 degrees. 90 degrees at the elbow, as well as rotation. 90 degrees the elbow. You have uh, below the elbow rotation, which is a miss. It's, just, it's useless, pretty much. Um, they both have thigh rotation, just 360. This guy, because the way he transforms, it just locks in at the waist. He cannot, no waist rotation, whatever. And Cyclonus is also locked in at, basically at the waist. You think of the waist being like right here, where like, the detail is. But he has basically what is crotch rotation. He has a full range of movement at the elbow or at the shoulder. Nothing surprising. Same thing here. He has a little bit less, but pretty much all you need of range and a full range rotation. In terms of head movement, this guy, he has the light piping, which is great, but his head only rotates, which I thought was enough, but really, with the way this guy's head is sculpted, he has pretty good light piping. Again, you can see that. That is excellent. He has, like, excellent light piping. So they both have the good light piping. But his head is on a ball joint pretty high up. It can also shift a bit like that. But 
it's just a little bit of tilt. The ability to look up and look down a bit. It makes them so much more expressive. And I like that. And again, just look at how smooth he is. Like no molded detail in the chest, aside from that uh, blast effect point, which I don't mind because it adds playability. So you see, um, um, you know, comparing the two, like all that molded detail right there, that grating versus on this guy's shoulder is just completely flat and smooth. I really, if it, again, if it's painted, I like the panel work. If it's not painted or uh, panel lined, I really like the smooth flatness of the, you know, the cartoony look. In terms of weaponry, this Cyclonus has his uh, pre-rebirth gun. And you know, it's hollow on the bottom, which you expect. But look at this. It is molded just to just barely fit to keep the original look and also make him able to hold it normally. That's really cool. Of course, the tip is blast effect compatible, but if you like the movies and you kind of want to create your own universe, your own imagination world, because the way he transforms, you just fold the hand in, and he has a movie-style hand cannon. And you can, you know, of course, because there's the port there, you can attach blast effects to that, too. So you have options for, you know, how G1 uh, stringent and accurate you want to be. So, Kingdom and Classic Cyclonus. I, if I was reviewing this when Classic Cyclonus came out, I would definitely be singing a different tune. It's just he's showing his age with um, his fragility and his loose tabs. And also just the different philosophies they had at the time where they um, didn't prioritize articulation as much. Um, and they, you know, they ha they played a bit looser with the G1 inspired designs. You know, just kind of, you know, as long as you get the idea of what the character is, they had different interpretations of it. Which I like, you know, I'm not against that at all. I think it's really neat. What I like with the modern generation stuff is that they are getting, like, they're getting out of the way, like, their definitive takes. Like, as far as I'm concerned, this is the definitive, the Kingdom one is the definitive Cyclonus for, like, you know, G1 cartoon uh, comic accuracy. And now they're free to do any other Cyclonus. They can make a, you know, a rework of the classic design. They can... Turn him into a stealth bomber. They can turn him into a boat for all I care. They can... Heck, Armada Cyclonus? Like that guy, I love that Armada Cyclonus. His cackling, uh, maniacal laughter. And the fact, it makes sense, you know. Cyclonus, Cyclone, Circle, Spinning, Helicopter Blades, Wind. It, it, the name fit. Um, so yeah, now we are... So just, just let the G1 fans have our stuff... And now we have it out of the way. We we're not going to complain when a new Cyclonus is made. That's what my opinion is. As far as uh, which one you should get, it depends on what you're looking for. Obviously, if you're a, more of a collector and you want both, if you collect a certain aesthetic like classic uh, generations chug, or you know modern more studio series. 86 style, just perfect G1 adaptations. And at that point, if you have enough money, go for Masterpiece, obviously. Um, even third-party Masterpiece stuff. But if you don't have enough money, like I don't, this Kingdom Cyclonus is very, very serviceable as, again, a mini Masterpiece. Aside from that, the yellowing on the hips I, I paint, and the uh, the joints. They, it's different plastic. It has to be stronger, but I definitely, I paint those. Um... Yeah, paint won't adhere to it as much. But if, if you're a collector and you really care that much about the looks, you're, you're, you're going to paint it 
and you're going to set it, you're going to pose it once and set it there and it'll stay there for years. And you'll touch up the paint, you know, every few months if it starts to flake away. But as long as you're careful, the paint won't just disintegrate. It just, you know, you can wipe it off. But as long as you don't touch it to wipe it off, it should stay. Like I always say, I don't want to knock anyone's, uh, you know, what they like. So if you prefer a certain style of design over the other, I'm not going to say which one you should or shouldn't get. But this time, I'm going to say, unless you're okay with a bit of a headache, get the Kingdom Cyclonus because the old one, the old mold, he shows his age and the lack of articulation, which... The lack of articulation, I can deal with that. I really wish she had bicep rotation, but I can overlook it. Uh, otherwise, it's particularly serviceable. But it's just th the fact that he falls apart if you look at him wrong. That is unfortunate. And let me be clear, if we, like I said, um, I'd be saying very different things if this is right when he came out. When he came out, I didn't have any problems with him at all. Over the years, I've transformed this guy, I don't know how many times, like any uh, anything under the sun that is built and manufactured by human hands, it will just slowly wear apart over time. With just the nature of, you know, with just the nature of material and, you know, anything under the sun, the universe, entropy, everything returning to its original finite point. Hey. Hey. I'll get to you. I'll get to you later. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's my look at both Cyclonuses that I have uh, in current good working order. Go back, Unicron. Yeah. And there's my uh, opinions on both. Obviously, my opinion is a uh, evil, toxic G1er is a I like Kingdom. Um, classic still has his place. And if you like the classic design, and if you're okay with the problems of his age, you just bear that in mind if you choose to pursue the older Cyclonus toy. It's your own choice. But I know what I prefer. But that is your daily dose of me for now.